Alright, welcome back. We're going to have a hopefully fairly quick video this time. And what you have in front of you is a taken apart uh, Schaefer Imperial, probably from the 60s or 70s. But let me just go ahead and show you what we have. I'll do the polishing. We'll get it back together. You'll kind of see the re-put-it-together process. And we'll do a little bit of writing just to kind of see how this particular guy works. So if you just kind of see it first off, just kind of the barrel parts here, it almost looks like the Parker P, not Parker, but the Schaefer PFM. And yeah, it really has that feel to it. It's just kind of a, a good, solid, big pen with the springy clip. And of course, I've kind of pre-taped some things so you would have this nice kind of chrome cat band right here. So this is a nice blue one. It's, it actually looks pretty good at first glance. It just has a lot of like little minor surface wear just this pen was used. Um, so, well, used but taken care of, I should say. It looked actually pretty darn good. So here we have the barrel, we have the hood, and we have this connector piece that goes in between. And this is actually going to be a cartridge converter style. So to make that happen, we have our feed that's in two pieces actually, which is kind of interesting. That's going to be nestled in here. And then we have <clears throat> a little silicone seal. And that's going to go up against that, which is going to seat against the feed and kind of give us, oops, oh, hold on. Our first insertion into this little section, the much shorter of the two, which is going to have our kind of catch ring in there and that's what's going to be fed up into the cap and just twist it out. This one actually came apart really easily but <clears throat> the undoing would be just kind of how we've done it in the past with either some dry heat from your hair dryer or heat gun and a little bit of heat give it a try or you could do the wet soap method that seems to work pretty well so heat a little bit of water up get it kind of uh, 160 ish 170 kind of hot to the finger and can't keep it in more than a few seconds but you know it's not boiling and just kind of let that soften any adhesive and give it a few shots and you can probably pull it out so that's pretty much it I mean I'll show you a little more detail when we put it back together but I'm going to go ahead and show you what I taped off I've taped off the cap band nice shiny metal just like this clip is and this has the inlaid kind of a diamond nib i think it was called the diamond nib but it's inlaid it's got a little cut out into it and it comes to a nice fine point so i just kind of cut some electrical tape went over the diagonals i might have to redo it because it seems like it's pulled away a little bit from this bit down here um, just so that i can kind of go ahead and use my micro mesh and not really worry about getting it up onto the metal at all and then down here um, just this hollow body, there is a, <clears throat> um, somewhere in here it starts. Oh, I guess I did, I cover it all up. Ah, yeah, there's a little gap in here, but it says Schaefer or something USA. We'll see, we'll see what it looks like when I take it apart or take the tape off after the polish. But I'm going to go ahead and do my polishing on these guys. Um, soak everything, give everything a good brushing, good cleaning. And this guy actually looks pretty darn supple so um, I could replace the second here which would involve me probably snaking a little bit of my armature wire up in here something stiff to kind of get up to it or maybe just be able to like, go from here to the other side just so I can pound it out because it is kind of crimped in and you could spend some time trying to uncrimp it but I honestly think it's easier to just pop it out and then Resack it and then push it back in and maybe if I have one that I need to replace I'll show it to you, but this one I think it's going to be super serviceable. I'm not going to mess with it So we'll go ahead and pause here. I'll do my polishing and we'll come back and put it back together And here we are everything is polished up mostly cleaned up and we're ready to reassemble and I have everything just kind of in a pile out here I even have one additional thing. I have some silicone grease we'll need. So if we go ahead and focus on packing the, I guess, hood section, we will take our feed, which 
has some combs around the outside. Here's the bottom of it. And then you'll see a channel right through the top. And that is what's going to accept this piece. It looks like a comb with a handle, but it also has kind of the fins right there. And so if you fins up, go to that cutout on the top of the feed, slide that in, line it up. It looks just like any other normal Schaefer feed now. Not sure entirely why this is a two-piece system, but it is, and that's what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and take our silicone seal ring, which pretty darn pliable, feels pretty good. I'm going to take just a little bit of silicone grease. I'm going to go ahead and rub it all around. And I'm going to apply this down right there. We will take this piece with the metal part that goes into the cartridge or converter. That'll go out and away. And we'll slide this on over the ink channel. And take it down towards that seal. Give it a good little turn to kind of get that silicone grease on both sides of that seal. And let's go ahead and grab our hood again. And here's our bottom. Here's the bottom. Let's go ahead and pre-line it up. Just gonna slide it in there, maybe do a little wiggle. But it should come out, come forward a little bit more than that. Actually, maybe, maybe I take this off so I can, there we go. That let me push it all the way forward. So I had to take this off for a second. So let me slide that back on. There we go. We'll take this little clutch ring or the cap where the cap catches. And you'll note there is kind of the punched out, crimped up section or side to it. And then there is like a nice solid side to it. I, I don't really know what to call that other than the way it's folded. So the open part of the fold being down, and this does matter, I did find this out. You put it on into those little notches so that the folded over section, hollow section, is down towards the bottom. If you have this flipped and it goes the other way, the cap has a hard time um, getting onto it. You really have to force it, it could break, but this directionality actually does matter. Let's go ahead and take our little connector. There is a kind of a thin seam that's going to separate this shorter top section from this much longer bottom section. And I heard it flip out. Where did it go? I just lost my little ugh, clutch ring. Went flying. But let's grab it again. Check the orientation. And just pop it back in. There we go. In there. So I'm going to take this short section. That's going to go towards the hood. I'm just going to finger tighten that down. There we go. Finally threaded correctly, so there we go. I'm gonna take this converter, which, like I said before, super supple sack, SSS, super, super supple sack. So I'm not gonna do anything to replace it. I think this has some good life left in it. All we have to do is slide that in, a little bit of firm pressure, and it slips right in. It is on there. We take our barrel, thread that back on, Nice seam, and we take our cap, Oop, if I can see it, and pop it on, nice and solid. So there we go, that is a complete Imp Schaefer Imperial, taken apart, put back together, and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this guy up, get all the inky, not inky, but the greasy fingerprints off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of Renaissance wax, since we've got this nice plastic that I can make shine up, and I'll show this sucker off when we do a little writing sample. All right, welcome back. We have this, what I call the Schaefer Imperial in front of you. Um, did a little bit of research. This is not an Imperial. This would be a quasi Imperial. So I can get into that in a second. But, um, you know, the Imperial line, 
uh, was based basically on the PFM, the pen for men. It's got this very kind of chunky um, kind of aspect to it, very large, a little bit larger, a little oversized, just kind of, I guess, masculine uh, features to it. But when they started making Imperials, they kind of kept the snorkel fillers for a little bit, and then they made them cartridge converters, and they were still kind of a high-end pen, but that came with a lot of options, and this is probably in the mid to late 60s. Um, and this is what would be called a quasi-imperial. Um, probably came out in the early 1970s as a cartridge pen. Um, the trim on this is a little, it's not the gold that would make it a higher tier pen. Um, it's stainless steel, well polished, but um, let me kind of just show you the features of this one up close. And my lighting looks a little bit off. It's hard to see, but on my camera, it looks a bit dark. So hopefully when I upload this, it'll have a little bit uh, better color to it. But it, I think this one polished up really well. And if you can't tell, I hope you can, this is a nice kind of vivid blue color. Um, and it polished really well. So up here we have, this is a uh, steel nib. This has got what's the short diamond in it. Um, um, it's kind of got longer at the bottom, a little bit of a triangular top to it. So this is kind of an inlaid diamond nib. Uh, it says Schaefer's USA down here. And I'll see if I can maybe zoom in if you can see some of that stuff. Sorry for this one. This is not the best lighting job, but there's Schaefer's up here. There's USA down here. And it's you know, stainless steel, so it has no kind of 585 or any other kind of gold or silver markings on it. We have just a s simple plastic feed down here. There we go, has a couple little kind of cutouts into it. And then we have the hood. I'll call it the hood, the section, whatever you want to call it. And nothing remarkable about that. We have the little footies for the catch, cap catch. Then we come down here, and I'll see if I can show you the imprint, but all it really does is say, it just says shapers. If I can show it, maybe, maybe not. There we go. I just think I get the color a little bit too. There we go. Yeah, this pops up really well, so every time I touch it, it gets really smudged up. So I keep taking my jeweler's cloth to it. So if I turn this right, there you go, there's the angle of it. Schaefer's, I'm kind of losing it, but that's all it says on the barrel. So covering that up, it was pretty easy to polish. There we go. Oh, let's see, what does it say back here? Oh, that's a USA on the other side. USA, if we can show it, but that's it. And we come down here to the end of it, just kind of like a squared off with a slight dome um, edge, but it is round. That's a little bit different than the PFM and some other Imperials. This is nice and round. And then we can take out here, and I'll show you the cartridge again. Pops in, nice metal collar down here. It has a nice little solid feel to it. And this one I did not change out because this is silicone sack still super pliable, has a good vacuum or suction to it, and it looks pretty good. I just kind of rinsed it out, flushed it, flushed it, and it looks pretty good. It's probably a little stained with age, but rather than try to pop this riveted um, little nipple out, I f figured that this one's in such good condition, I don't want to go through the extra step of you know messing up or getting any dings in, the, in this particular bit, which um, we can show maybe another video if I ever have to replace one, but we'll put that in there. Screw it back on. And we have our cap, which very similar to the PFM. Has this large cap band down here. This one is nicely polished stainless steel. And we have our spring clip. Simple, kind of squared. Um, Springy clip with the Schaefer dot. Doesn't say Schaefer, doesn't say lifetime, just a simple finish on this one. And this is the squared off cap, just like the PFM. So there we go. So let's see. Let's go ahead and measure this guy up for you. Zoom out. So if I say capped, we'll go inches. 
we'll go from the base to the top, we'll say five and mm -hmm -hmm, one eighth, it looks like. Just shy of five and a quarter, really. And we'll go uncapped. And this is to the very tip, right about four and a half inches, which in my five nine hands again, sits pretty comfortably. Um, diameter wise, looks like it has a very slight taper down to the end. So it's probably gonna be widest right here around the hood section um, interface with the barrel. So let's see if I can estimate. Okay, looks like about 7 sixteenths. And can we post this guy? Yeah, it'll post nice and securely. So, uh, let's see. Sorry about that. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it with this um, Roma 2000 um, ink from Omaz. I've been playing around with this lately and being that such a nice blue pen, I'm gonna put a little blue ink in it. So let's go ahead and fill this guy. I'm gonna take off the back, dip it in. Here's some bubbles. There we go. Let's wipe it off. I'm gonna try my best to remember to show the emptying at the end. So we'll just see what three squeezes would do for this. It looks like I got a little bit of ink into the threads. Let me get that off. There we go. Let's put this over here. This is do a quick little writing sample, and I'll turn the paper so you can see it. We'll make this one fairly quick. Let's see, perfect. Okay, so this is the Schaefer 330 in blue with steel nib, probably around. There we go. I'll zoom in while I do it. early 1970s. This would also be called more of a collector's term. This is not in any kind of Schaefer literature. This would be a quasi imperial, not an official imperial line, but close enough in design that people just kind of call it quasi imperial. Okay, so first off, this actually feels pretty smooth. This is very smooth. This is, of course, my Rhodia paper. And it looks very shiny. This looks like a wet ink. And I'd say this is probably a fine, kind of bordering on to like a, like a medium, somewhere in that fine to medium territory. But this is a very smooth nib on this paper. Um, I looked under the, um, under the loop and I did not have to do a thing to it, but that's very nice. So let's go ahead and see how wet this guy is. It is so shiny. Yeah, it's a decently wet nib. Yeah, so wet ink, wet nib, um, one of the two, but it writes really well. Um, let's see if there's any line variation. I'm gonna doubt it because it's of the inlaid nib. Not really, I think you can squeeze a little bit out of it, but that's putting pressure where you don't need to put pressure. So there we go. So let's write a sentence. This is actually really nice. I almost kind of wish there were a little bit more feedback because you, sometimes you get into the situation where um, it's a smooth nib on a smooth paper and it's almost too easy to write and you wind up not getting the handwriting that you're used to because it's, you have to slow down to have a little bit more control. So this is kind of getting to like a very, like just slick writer, which for some people that's going to be perfect. And this, I mean, I don't hate it. I, I actually kind of dig it and I would have fun writing with this pen. Um, what else do I usually do? Let's see if there's any reverse writing. That's kind of scratchy, kind of digging in. But it goes down a step. You can get some finer lines out of it. And it's not terrible. Just have a lighter hand and you could do it. But it is a bit scratchy. Okay. 
yeah, I think that's it. This is a, actually a really fun little pen. I don't know what I'm writing there, but let me just... Yeah, that's actually really fun. I like this pen. Uh, anything else to say about it? Um, not an Imperial, not a fancy felling mechanism, but I do like the fact that it has this original kind of um, converter into it. And you can, of course, use it uh, a cartridge in here as well. Um, I tend to really like the fact that you have something that you don't have to dispose of. I don't, I don't like um, using cartridges or yeah, cartridges and having to just get rid of them, get rid of them, get rid of them. The few that I do have, I do kind of refill them with a needle, but I like the fact that pens like this have the reservoir that you can continually fill and keep along with the life of the pen. Um, so I'm going to say this is a great pen. I like this one a lot. Um, let me go ahead and show just what three squeezes did for the filling. And I'm going to say this would probably be a good everyday go-to heavy writer. Um, let's go squeeze. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. That's me getting one good squeeze down. And we get a little blurbs, but three, four, five, just to see what happens. Yeah, that's got good capacity. I like this one a lot. So, yeah, um, probably one that gets a little bit overlooked. I think, you know, just kind of being a lower tier Imperial, people aren't as impressed by them. I'm guessing, because um, when I see these on eBay, I tried to look around to see what these are selling for. Looks like they're selling for, you know, 50, 60 bucks if they were in good condition. So, a great entry level pen if you want an every, everyday writer and something a little bit vintage, um, but definitely modern looking still. It's such a good classic design that I think this would be a good everyday writer, a good pocket pen. It's going to write for a very long time, and it's a very excellent writer with a steel nib yeah so let me go ahead and stop it there i'll clean up my pen and we shall see you next time i think i'm working on a clipper that is kind of like going side by side with this pen so that'll probably be the next thing that goes up and we'll see what we get into with the following pens